Republican Senator Mike Rounds of South Dakota, I'm guessing he right now is opposing the must-pass spending deal, but it might not even get to the Senate uh, the, the way we're sounding. Senator Rounds, my guess is you're learning information as Casey Hunt's reporting it. Um, but let me ask you this. Are we at the brink today uh, because President Trump's tweet this morning, did it, did it sort of get more chaotic because of that chip tweet this morning? I don't think so. I think the bigger issues here are, first of all, a number of the Democrats in the Senate have a real interest in doing an immediate DACA deal. Uh, there are a number of Republicans in the Senate that are just plain convinced that we've got to send a message about how bad CRs are in terms of long-term funding. Uh, right. We did, you know, we've had four in four months now. Uh, there's a number of us still trying to get to a, a yes vote. Uh, I'm concerned about the defense spending. Uh, I also recognize that we've got to have Democrats on board with us in order to get to 60 votes. Uh, and so in this discussion, hopefully some of the hawks on the Democrat side as well, if we can get something for defense, um, I think maybe a few of those folks may very well come over and join us. But at this stage of the game, uh, I don't know that we've got the votes in the Senate right now. I'm one of the people that is still you're trying no. to get to yes. I'm not there right now. Yeah, That's you're correct. a no. Are you a no on cloture? Yeah. Are you a no on the whole thing? Like, you're not even going to let it come to the floor? Or are you a, I'll vote no on the bill, but I'll let it come to the floor? We'll wait and see what comes over from the House if it gets here to begin with. Okay. I've told leadership, look, number one, I, this is not a case of where any of us want to shut government down. Uh, we've still got another full day before anything like that would happen. Uh, what we want to do is to make sure that we've done everything we possibly can to help those folks on the front lines and to give them some assurances that, that we care about whether or not they're actually mm -hmm. getting the funding that's necessary to take care of their needs. At the same time, we know that that means that it's got to be Republicans and Democrats both in yeah. agreement that, uh, that we've got a way to move forward. All right. Let's say in this fantasy world that you guys do get a month. <clears throat> Explain to me why this gets easier in a month. We'll be that much closer to the DACA deal totally expiring. Oh, by you're, the way, you're asking my you're asking my question. <laughs> I know. Right. Ex explain to me how we, you have debt ceiling that you're going to need to raise again in March. So now you're now you've got government funding running and DACA, all of it running together. And that's supposed to be easier than the, the, the chaos you're dealing with now. Well, and, and you've got one more thing. You no longer have chip as a bargaining point because or the defense if this spending, goes through or perhaps defense spending as a bargaining chip. Well, and, and, and that's just it. Under the current proposal, CHIP is not, then off the table because it's then been extended for a period of six years. And mm -hmm. so then what is the next bargaining chip that actually brings Democrats to the table? So that's one of the questions I think that a number of us have raised. We understand the need to keep government open. We also understand that doing one continuing resolution after another, nobody really wants. And look, this has been going on for 44 years. Uh, now, here we are right. once again, four times in 44 years that this process has actually worked. Yeah. What we really want to do is bring to a head the fact that it's not working for Republicans or Democrats, and that at some stage of the game, we have to recognize and make a deal that both majority and minority can stand up and say this is a better solution to funding for the government than what we've been doing since 1974. Look, you're, you're a former governor. You, you, you intuitively have had to deal with budgets. Um, so many of the senators haven't. Do you think your fellow senators, particularly Republicans, do they realize that you're actually handing Democrats more leverage if you extend just one more month? I mean, let's just break it down in crass politics. When you throw in debt ceiling, which Republicans have never been able to raise on their own, you actually are handing the Democrats more leverage. If you just look at it in terms of that, so whatever DACA deal you don't like today, doesn't it get worse in a month? I guess that's the way that I've kind of looked at it. Uh, okay. I, I thought and you and I were on the same page on this, but I yeah. wouldn't. <laughs> look, no, no, look, I mean, look, it, it, this is a case of where I, I know we have disagreements, Republicans and Democrats alike. But look, the reality is, is Republicans want to do a DACA deal, but they also want border security. Mm -hmm. And actually, President Trump does as well. And I don't think we're that far off. But it's a matter of, as Leader McConnell says, and I think he's correct on this, this is not an emergency that has to be done in two days. I, I agree with him on that. But I do think if we're talking about a continuing resolution, there has to be some format set up that actually says we're getting closer to a final solution on the budget between now right. and October. And, and if we don't get to that stage of the game, how can we go back to our home states and say we're actually getting our job done? If we did this in Pierce, South Dakota, the people would throw <laughs> us out on our ear. I, uh, that's for sure. Very quickly, the five-day CR thing that I smell is coming. 
because nobody wants nobody nobody wants to be the ones to shut it down. Are you going to that will fly through both houses if it's just a five day deal? I think it probably would. Uh, I've talked to a number of my colleagues who said that while they would not vote for a 30 day or a continuation until February 26th, if we could do something before the State of the Union so we can actually get this behind us, I think that's a positive for everybody. And yeah. I don't know whether or not we're actually going to be able to do an entire DACA deal, but let's at least talk about whether or not, since we all really want to do it and we want to get the border security completed, right. heck, I need H-2B visas right. in South Dakota. That's a critical part for our economy right. and the tourism time of the year. I think there's an opportunity here, but I think if we continue to kick the can down the road, we're not yeah. going to get it resolved. Fair enough, Senator Rounds. I also don't know what, what new information everybody needs on DACA. Like, everybody knows what, what's on the table here. Everybody just has to sort of grin and bear it here there, at some point. There, there were a number of areas yeah. that I think we can bring the president on board with. I think he's right. There needed to be more border security discussion on it. And we have to do a little bit better job on restricting who is actually eligible yeah. for DACA. But I think that, along with H-2Bs, which a lot of us really care about, yep. I think that brings a lot of people to the table. Senator Rounds, uh, I appreciate you doing this in real time because I think we're all learning information in real time as it happens yeah. right now. It's one of those days. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.